Hi guys, apologies for not making videos for so long. I was busy with some personal stuff, but yeah, back here now, so I'll be making regular videos from now on. So we'll be discussing the problem C from Code Force around 851 that was rated for div 2. The problem's name is matching numbers, and the problem states that you are given an integer n. Pair the integers 1 to 2 n such that e uh, each sum of matched pairs is consecutive and distinct. So what they are asking us to do is that we have numbers from 1 to 2 n. We have to make pairs. When I say pairs, it basically means uh, a set of two numbers, right? So we'll be making n pairs, right? Or n set of two numbers each. All the uh, pairs should be distinct. Uh, we cannot repeat the elements. That means, and also every pair should should uh, should be such that the difference between the uh, last pair and the current pair is actually one. So that's what they've given. Also over here, n, which is the uh, number that they'll be providing us, is uh, less than or equal to 10 to, uh, 10 to the power of five. The number of test cases is less than 500. So that's cool. So it could be the scenario that we are unable to construct a pair. In that case, we'll simply print no. In case we are able to uh, like come up with a pair, then in that case, we'll print a yes followed by the pair itself or all the pairs. For example, over here, let's look at two. So if they have provided n is equal to two, that means the number we have is one, two, three, and four, right? So are we able to make a pairs with that? So answer is simply no. Uh, however, if n is equal to 3, then we are able to make pairs with that. So we'll print a yes and then we make the pairs. So over here, the pairs are 1, 6. 1, 6 has a sum of 7. 3, 5 has a sum of 8. And 4, 2 has a sum of 6. So we have sums 6, 7, and 8 over here. So this is a valid answer. So I think with that, the gist is done. You understand what we want to do. So let's get started with the intuition behind it and how to solve it. So let's firstly talk about the sums, right? So we are given numbers that are Okay, a second, yeah. Okay, so the numbers are one, two, three, four, up to so on to two n, right? So what would be their sum? The sum actually is n by two into two a plus n minus one into d, or the sum typically can be read as n by two into a plus l, where this is the first term, this is the last term. So over here, the number of terms are two n actually. So I'll write two n divided by two. The first term is one, the last term is two n. I'll write like this. This would get cancelled out. This would become n into 1 plus 2n. Cool. Now, when we'll be making the pairs, so the pairs would be like x1, y1, then we'll have x2, y2, x3, y3, so on. Uh, however, the only condition over here is that the difference between the sum of x1, y1 and x2, y2. So x1 plus y1, sorry, y1 is equal to okay is equal to x2 plus y2 minus 1 that uh, would actually satisfy the consecutive criteria so what i'll do over here now is that i'll say also for all of these terms the sum would exactly with this because all the numbers would would be actually written when we are computing this so the sum technically would be the same for both of these scenarios so what would be the sum over here so the sum over here can be written as the number of terms are n right because they are pairs and we have n pairs in total. So total number of terms are n. So n divided by 2. What is the first term? We don't know it yet. So we'll be using the formula n by 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 into d. Right. Cool. So n by 2 into 2a plus n minus 1. What is d? Since they are consecutive. So d is actually 1 over here. Let's solve it further. So actually it won't be solved further. It would just remain this term. So let's name it term 2 this is term 1 now let's equate these two terms because they have to be equal so that would give me uh, n into 1 plus 2n is equal to n by 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 in 1 right let's bring this cancel out these n's let's bring this 2 over here so i'll get 2 plus 4n is equal to 2a plus n minus 1 let's bring this minus 1 over here so this will become 3 let's bring this n over here this will become 3n is equal to 2a or in the terms a is equal to 3 plus 3n divided by 2 now since a which is the first term which would actually be equal to x1 plus y1 right this has to be an integer we are not dealing with fractions right so that would mean that 3 plus 3n should actually be an even term only then it can be divisible by 2 right so 3 plus 3n needs to be even now we are adding 3 to this. Now what uh, in what scenario can we add 3 to a number or odd number to a number and the final number is even. So as we know that odd plus odd 
is the only case where we get an even, right? If it's odd plus even, then also it's odd. It's a, it's a even plus odd, then also it's odd, right? Even plus even is obviously even. Over here, this number is odd, so hence this number also needs to be odd. Now three n would uh, would be odd if n is odd, right? So this is the basic thing. So the first uh, condition we are able to get over here is that if our if our n is even, then answer doesn't exist. So this is basic stuff. If this happens, we can, uh, we can simply print a no. Uh, print a no. If this doesn't happen, we can print a yes, and then we'll have to compute the answer. Now I hope up till this point everything is clear. Now how do we print the answer? Now there are multiple ways of doing it. However, I stumbled across a very intuitive version. Or uh, when I was writing down the equation, I was able to come up with a few approaches. Uh, but this one definitely was the most intuitive thing to do. Now let's say my n is equal to five, right? So the numbers we are having is one, two, three. Four, five, and uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now let's try to write it in such a way that these pairs, which are being formed, actually have an equal sum, right? So that would be one, ten, two, nine, three, eight, four, seven, and five, six, right? All of these terms now have a sum of eleven. Cool. But if every, everything has a sum of 11, then in that case, my condition that every sum, uh, every terms, so let's call it the uh, pair S1, this is S2. So I wanted that S1 is equal to S2 plus 1, right? Or S2 is equal to S1 plus 1. Now this uh, equation won't be sat satisfied. So what can I do with this? Now let's just say that first term itself is 1, one and 110, right? So let it be that way. Now if I consider the next term to be 2, right? as we are getting two, uh, two after one, right? So is there any way I can make this term just one more than the previous term than previous? So that would mean since this had a sum of 11, I want a sum of 12. Can I make it a sum of 12? To make it 12, I need a 10 over here, right? But then it would get duplicated. So definitely there's no way. So there's no way of uh, making the other term just one more than the previous term. So what I can do is I can skip this number. So I'll skip two as a whole, I'll write three. What happens when I write three is that I'm adding two to this, right? But since I only wanted the other term to be one more, right, than the previous term, I'll subtract one from this. So this would now become nine. Cool. What about the other term? Now again, the same thing would happen, right? If I add one, then I have to subtract one from there. And uh, like, if I add one over here, right, then I have to write this term as it is so that the uh, difference remains to be one only. So I won't be doing that. Rather, what I'll be doing is that I'll be adding two to this. So I'll be saying this is five and I'll be subtracting one from this. So this will become eight. So now this has a, a sum 11. This has a sum of 12. This has a sum of 13, right? With that, I guess my, get my first three terms. So one, the, one of the pair is 110, the other pair is 39, the other pair is 5, 8. Now with this, I've exhausted one, three and five, or I can say that I've exhausted the odd numbers, but the even numbers that are two and four are still remaining. So what I can do with them now for the even numbers, I'll uh, over here, you can see that I was decreasing the sum by one or the other term by one. I was having 10, then I was having nine, this, then I was in eight. This term in the starting actually is two n. this is two n minus one. This is two n minus two, right? I'll keep doing this now over here also for even term. So the next term over here or in the bottom part of the pairs would actually be two n minus three. So two n minus three is actually, okay. So it was a eight, then we'll be having a seven. So two, seven, and then four, six. So these are the even numbers. Let me write it down below so that it makes more sense. So basically for the odd numbers, we were having one and a 10, right? Then we were having three and a nine. Then we were having four and a eight. Then we started adding even numbers. So for even numbers, we had two and a one subtracted from this is seven. Then we'll have a, okay, one, three, this is a five, sorry. Yeah, then we'll have a four. This is even, this is odd. I hope that's making sense. Yep, so then we'll be having two, seven, then a four, six. Now let's check the sums. So this has a sum of 11, this has a sum of 12, this has a sum of 13, this has a sum of uh, nine, right? This has a sum of 10, cool. 
So what's happening over here is that 9, 10 is already here. After 9, 10, I'm having 11, 12, 13. And since the order in which we uh, compute the answers or the order in which we write the pairs does not matter. So I can directly print it in this way. Now, uh, I think most of you would have already understood the intuition. However, if something is still unclear, you can let me know. But I wanted to point one thing out over here is that when I was writing 1 and 10, right? So the main idea in order to consider 3 over here was that if I was picking the next term, that is 2, right? So if I'm picking 2, then I'm simply adding 1. Now, since I wanted that the next term should only differ by a value 1 itself. So if I'm adding 1 over here, the uh, next term that was 10 would actually ha be added 0 to it, right? Only in that way, the entire sum of this would have a difference of 1 from the previous term. So if I had add a 0, so it would also be 10. That would, uh, you know, not satisfy the criteria that all the numbers should be different. So that is the only reason I had to add 2 over here, right? Since I add 2, then I have a... Uh, like I have a choice or I'll, ha I'll actually be subtracting one from this and then I'll be getting different values. So that's the sole reason of doing that. And uh, in that way, I was able to come up with the solution. So I wanted to share this particular approach with you. Cool. So let's also look at the code now. The code is fairly simple. Cool. So this is the code right over here. So what I'm doing is firstly, as we check that if a number is even, then in that case, answer cannot exist. So that's what I'm doing over here. After that, I'll print yes, because if uh, the number is not even, then the answer definitely exists. I just need to come up with the answer. My Y, so over here, uh, the X is the first term and the Y is the second term of the pair, right? So initially, if you remember the first, uh, for the first uh, first pair itself, the second term is actually 2N, right? And uh, in the in each iteration, I'm actually subtracting or decreasing the second term by 1. So that's exactly what I'm do uh, doing over here. Firstly, I'll be starting for, with the odds. So odds are 1, 3, 5 and so on. So this loop is actually calculating the odds. So I'm printing the odd numbers followed by Y and then I'm decrementing my Y. Y is actually the second term of the pair. Similarly, then I'll be calculating for the even numbers and I'll be doing the same operation with Y. I'll be decrementing Y in each term. So cool, that was it for the solution. A few people uh, requested for the solution and I think that this was a pretty interesting and intuitive, uh, intuitive problem. If you were not, were not able to do it in the contest, uh, don't take it hard on yourself. It generally happens. This was not something that requires uh, knowledge of some complicated DSA, but just some intuition based. So sometimes it clicks, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know if I actually appeared for this contest, would I have been able to solve it or not? But yeah, cool guys. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll, I'm always uh, more than willing to help you out. Bye-bye.